Okay, you can turn in your Bible to Ephesians chapter 1. I'm going to talk to you in this video about the fact that you can't accept Jesus. He must accept you. Okay, There's, this is where a lot of the confusion comes in. People don't understand the most important part of salvation is the fact that God has to be the one that saves you. You can't save yourself. Again, like I talked about in my study outside, um, you know, the one sin that you have to repent of is your self-righteousness. You can't have your self-righteousness and the righteousness of Jesus Christ. They're two separate things. And I got, and I got, it's, it just amazes me. I actually had people fight me on that. That's not true. You can still be self-righteous and get saved. You know, <laughs> uh, I'm not talking about being self-righteous at the point of salvation and giving that up and saying, okay, I'm done. I don't trust in my own good works anymore. All right? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you get your profession of salvation and you say, I'm, I'm a good person afterwards. Uh, that's where the fail happens there. Okay? But let's start out here, Ephesians chapter 1 in verse 3. And we're going to see this thing about the fact that Jesus Christ has to accept you. It isn't about you coming and saying, I'm going to, I've accepted Jesus and, and He's my Savior and I'm going to go to heaven. When I, and you're making all these statements uh, based on your mental convictions and your mental understanding of this book. God is the one that has to save you. Let's see about that. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ according as He hath chosen us, He chooses us, in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the good pleasure of our will. I know it's His will. Okay? Now, if you're a Calvinist, you, you're getting all excited here. This is our key scripture. This is our key passage. You know, we're chosen, we're predestinated before the world began, and, and, and so we're the elect, and then there's the non-elect that are predestinated to hell. Uh, then you have all kinds of scriptures that you contradict. You know, all kinds of scriptures. You know, uh, the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. All men everywhere. Um, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him, whosoever, and Scripture after Scripture after Scripture, and you have to make it the elect, whosoever the, of the elect. Um, well, how does that work? If it's whosoever the elect believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Um, how could you have one of the elect not believe and have and perish and not have everlasting life? Nuttyville, okay? That's what Calvinism is. John Calvin I believe his main sin was he was trying to be God. Very simple. And figure out this thing of you know, predestination and election and whatever else. Trying to figure out what God knows in eternity. Obviously, God knows who's going to get saved. He's in eternity. You see? But that doesn't mean that people don't have a free will. That doesn't mean that people, he didn't give people free will because he's already chosen those who, he's going to get, you know, who are going to be saved. And if you're not one of his chosen, then you can't possibly get saved at all. He'd be contradicting his word, you see. But let's continue. Verse 5 there, the end of it, according to the good pleasure of his will, you know. Verse 6, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Oh boy, very key scripture right there. To the praise of the glory of his grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I did my video what, however long ago and I said no one was saved by faith alone in the entire Bible. Nobody. Nobody has ever been by, saved by faith alone. And I get the, the number one reply back is, but the Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, for by grace are ye saved three... Uh, whoa, huh? By grace... Are you saved through faith? It's not faith alone. God's grace, man's faith. God has grace for us miserable, wicked sinners. Man puts his faith in that grace, in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the blood that was shed. You see? And when you do that, it's up to God to say, legitimate or you're just faking with me. God is the one that purchases you. Okay. 
He hath made us accepted in the Beloved. We don't accept Jesus. He accepts us, like I said. Verse 7, In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of His grace. There it is again. His grace. Not your grace. Not my grace. His grace. He has to save you. So you get a bunch of wicked devils, they come out and they say, you don't have to ask God to save you. You don't have to call upon Him to save you. You just, you know, it's kind of like a, a classified ad and, you know, help wanted. And there's this business there and, and you know, it says, call, please call. And, we'll, you, know, you know, we'll set up an interview and whatever else and determine if we're going to hire you. And you just show up for work. And you walk in there and you say, hi, how you doing? All right, uh, I'm just going to go back and sit down and read a magazine. And uh, let me know when my paycheck's ready there, boss. And the boss says, uh, who are you? Oh, I, I work here. I'm here. I'm part of your company. And the boss says, um, did you go through the interview process? I, I never interviewed you. Who are you again? Oh, I saw your ad. I, I read it. And so I believed what was written there, that you need help. And I'm here to help you. And I'm an employee. And I'm going to do whatever I feel like doing. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye. The boss is going to say, oh, hold on a second there. It's not up to you to decide what you're going to do here. It's not up to you to decide if you're going to be part of this company. That's my job. I own the company. You come to me and I interview you and I see if you are worthy to be hired and whatever else. And I make the decision whether or not I'm going to hire you. And you come in there and somebody else, another guy comes along and he says, um, excuse me, uh, are you the, the guy that owns the place? Uh, yes, I am. Um, I really need a job. I'll, I'll, I'll work as hard as I can. And the boss says, okay, come on back. I'll interview you. And he walks back in there and the guy sits down and he says, um, sir, I, I'm just going to be straight and honest with you. And the boss says, that sounds good. I like honesty. And the man says, um, I really have no qualifications for this job here, but uh, I have a wife and children that I need to feed. And I'd be willing to just, I'll work as many hours as you tell me to work and I'll work as hard as I can for you, sir. And uh, I'll be here on time every day. And in fact, I'll work for the first week without even being paid just to show you how serious I am about working for you. And, and he goes on through and the, and the boss says, well, I'll be honest with you, um, you're not really qualified to work for me. But you know what? I'm going to have some grace for you. You're hired. You came to me in the right spirit. I think you're going to make a fine employee. I'll hire you. That's called grace. And that's what salvation is. You don't come to the Lord with this arrogant thing of, hey, I read in the Bible that it says if I believe, you know, I get in. And I, I'm not, I really don't want to do any kind of changed life or anything else like that after salvation. I'm just here and you're going to save me because I say so. Faith alone. My faith saves me. I don't need his grace. I don't need your grace, God. Whatever. It's it's there in the Bible. Yeah, I kind of yeah, we're all sinners. Technically, we're all sinners. I'm not really convicted about my sinful life I've had in the past. I just I want to go to heaven when I die. I want to, yeah, I want to have this religion thing. There's some nice stuff down at the local church there that I can be part of. And so uh yeah, I'm gonna do that. And um, God, you're not really gonna tell me what to do with my life. Okay? Uh it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. His grace is what saves. We're reading it. Let's continue. Verse 8. Wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. He hath abounded toward us. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself. <laughs> There's a lot of he in himself there. What part do you play in your salvation again? Verse 10, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. That's the resurrection, the catching up of the body of Christ. Many call it the rapture, and it will be a time of great joy. So you can call it, rapture is not a Bible word, I understand that, but it's a great description of what it's going to be when the Lord says, come up hither. Okay. The uh, work day's over, and we're going to sound the buzzer, so to speak, the trumpet, the voice that sounds like a trumpet. Looking forward to it. Verse 11, In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of Him 
who worketh all things after the counsel of our own will when we believe. When we turn from unbelief to belief. Uh, no, it doesn't say that. It says the counsel of his own will. His will. His grace. He accepts us. We don't accept him. Got to get a hold of that. Verse 12, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. You trust in Jesus Christ, don't you? Did he save you? Sure, it's faith alone. Uh, no scripture for that. There's not one verse of scripture that says faith alone. Huh. Verse 13, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Yeah. Right there. His grace. Now, that guy, that employee I talked about earlier, my little analogy there I gave there, and the boss says to him, you know what, I'm going to have grace. You're not qualified to work for me. You're really kind of bad, you know, and whatever else, but I'm, I'm going to have some grace for you. I think that you'll be a good employee for me. You're hired. Okay, I'll take you. I'll take you on. What happens if the guy doesn't show up for work? Is the boss just going to say, oh, okay, well, you know, it's okay. I'll just send him a paycheck. Mm -mm. No, the guy doesn't respond. You see, the Holy Spirit of God will come on you upon you as a sinner and he'll convict you of sins and he'll say, you need to repent. You're a self-righteous, no good, dirty, rotten, filthy sinner. And you need to turn from that life that you have there in terms of thinking that you're a good person. Not this turn from your sin stuff of the Lordship, Salvation, Roman Catholic Calvinists, okay, <laughs> that say you've got to just live this perfect life after. No, 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 no. That's just as wicked and evil as the easy believism crowd out there. You need to turn from your self-righteousness thinking that you're a good person. You see? You see God's grace for you. And He offers you salvation. Holy Spirit brings conviction upon you and says, you're a, a rotten, miserable sinner. But I have enough grace, I'll save you as a sinner, as a dirty, filthy, good for nothing that you are. And then I'll start telling you how to clean your life up and fix this mess that is your life. Yeah. And it's at that point that you say, all right, I trust you. Okay. I have nothing else I can do. I can't go back. You know, back to my analogy, the guy comes to the boss for the interview and he says, well, you know, I'm actually homeless right now. Uh, my wife and my children are staying with family and, and I'm, I'm just on the street. I mean, I can't go back to that. So if you'll take me, if you'll accept me, if you have grace for me, then hey, I'll be here first thing tomorrow morning. And I'm going to work real hard for you. Verse 14. And that guy, by the way, I'll say this, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, back to my analogy, and the boss says, okay, here. He gets a shirt out and he says, there, there's your work shirt. Here's your ID to get into the building or whatever else, you know. Yeah, there you go. You're an official employee now. I'll write down your name as an employee of this company. All right. Verse 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance under the redemption of the purchased possession under the praise of His glory. His glory again. And it's uh, His purchased possession. Again, you don't accept Jesus. He accepts you. He purchases you. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 but God, who is rich in mercy, for His great love wherewith He loved us. He loved us. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. Whose grace? Is it your grace? No. God's grace. He has to accept you. He has to have grace for you to accept you in the wicked, horrible position that you're in right now. Yeah. Well, I'm not really... That, okay, then he has no grace for you. He's not interested. You have to come to him in sincerity and truth and admit that you're no good. Verse 6, 
and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. It's all about him. These people, oh, what's heaven going to be like? Uh, I, I can't wait. I'm going to go up there and I'm Lord's going to build me a little cabin and I'm going to have everything that I loved on earth. My old hound dog that died years ago, he's going to be there and all the nice things and everything else and whatever. That's not heaven. Okay? What's it about? His glory. How about a praise and worship service? Not the modern, you know, church worship stuff. That's just satanic nonsense. Praise and worship service of Jesus Christ for all of eternity. Worshiping Jesus. Glory and honor to the Lord. Glory and honor to the Lord. Oh, he gives me a crown. Okay, I'll take it off and throw it back at his feet and fall down before the throne. I don't know if I want that. Then go to hell and burn. Those are the only two options. Heaven is about the glory of Jesus Christ. That's why we're there. I'm looking forward to that. Getting to serve Jesus Christ forever and bringing glory to Him. Why? Because it's his grace that saved me. I didn't come on my terms to be saved. I came and accepted His terms. You see what I'm saying? Verse 8, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. All you have to do is believe. All you have to do is believe. All you have to do is just repeat this little prayer. The Catholic soul winner comes to your door and he just says, just pray this prayer if you want to go to heaven. You, would, you don't want to go to hell when you die, do you? Of course not. Well, then just pray this prayer. Just repeat these words after me. Dear Heavenly Father, blah, 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 and they take you through the little thing. That's all on you, you see. You see, the purpose of calling upon the name of the Lord, of praying and asking God to save you is you're coming to Him and you're submitting yourself before Him and saying, God, can you save me? Not just, oh, uh, this happened here. He died on the cross. Okay, I believe it. All right, I'm saved. I'm a Christian now. I'll just start bossing God around and just telling Him, hey, I want this and I want that and please do this for me and please do that for me and whatever. Mm -mm. No, it doesn't work that way. You come before the Lord and you say, God, please, please accept me. Please, you take me. Can you please have some grace for me, just a wicked old sinner that I am here? I can't fix my life up. I've tried all kinds of things to, to, to correct my life and it just it doesn't make any sense. Please, God, can you please save me? I know I'm not worth anything. Just a no account. I'm not worth shooting. I understand that, but please, could you please save me? So demeaning, you know? Just, just put yourself down and I mean, it's just... Not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. If you're counting on your good works to save you, perpetual good works, Lordship Salvation, in other words, you've, you have to stop your this, and you have to stop your that, and you have to stop all these things, and say, are you saved? Well, I hope so. I've dealt with Amish, you know, and, and things in the area here, and, and they'll, they'll say, uh, I believe that you can lose your salvation. You know what? They're absolutely right. Um, they can lose their salvation because it's not the salvation that God provides. If He purchases you, purchases you and, and things, He's paid the price for you, He saved you, how can you lose that? You'd have to take it away from God. <laughs> you know? How does that work? It doesn't. People that ask, can you lose your salvation? Well, I mean, I, maybe somebody that's brand new saved and they hear some of the false teaching out there against, you know, eternal security and whatever. Uh, they might they might think that way and things. But uh, a lot of these people that I've met that say you have to obey, you have to this, you have to that, when all these, it's all this works stuff. And what do they do? They boast about it. Mm -hmm. It's not the same thing as a preacher preaching against sin. That's fine. We're supposed to preach against sin. I'm talking about things of saying you have to do this, 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 and that, and that, and clean up all these different things in your life and keep yourself saved. You have to stay saved. And when you do all those things 
and you know, then you become a real great Christian and people really think highly of you and whatever else, they boast. Uh, when's the last time you heard a saved sinner? Somebody that's truly born again boast about the fact that, uh, boy, I sure was a wicked sinner and, oh man, I'm still struggling with things. I'm just such an idiot sometimes and I just can't believe God would save such a miserable old wretch like me. And I just, I failed again, Lord. I just, I knew I wasn't supposed to do this thing here and it, it's not boasting. You know, the Lord changed my life, but boy, I sure struggle with these things. You know, Romans chapter 7, Paul talking about that. It's not work salvation when you talk about a changed life, how God changed you. Okay, so much stuff we go over, but let's read verse 10. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. You come to God and you say, God, please save me. Will you accept me? Will you save me? Will you purchase me with your blood? And the Lord says, okay, now you're going to work for me. Not, you know, excluding com coming to the Lord as a sinner and just saying, I'm just going to do my work. You know, the guy comes to the job that I talked about earlier and he comes walking in and he says, he just starts picking up things and he starts doing things and the boss is going, who is this guy out here? I didn't hire him. Oh, he says he works here. He just made the decision himself. He, he circumvented you, boss. And he's just going to do his thing and eventually he's, you know, maybe he'll take over the company. I don't know. He's just out here doing his own thing. The boss isn't going to say, oh, that's really good. I, I, I appreciate that. Whatever, you know. Boy, look at him. He's really working here. The boss is going to say, hey, hey, you, what are you doing in my, in my factory here? What are you doing at my place here? This, I own this place. You don't come in here and start work, doing these works and things for me. And the, and the guy says, well, I'm doing more work than you. I've done a whole bunch of stuff out here on the floor. I'm getting, I'm getting work done. Who are you to talk to me that way? You know, and the guy says, "I'm the boss. I'm the one that owns the place." A lot of Christians do that. A lot of professing Christians do that. They make their own decisions. I am a Christian. I'm saved. Go to Titus chapter three. I'm a Christian. I'm saved because I say I'm saved. And then they get mad at you for bringing up the thing of you know, coming to the Lord as a sinner and calling upon Him to be saved. Titus chapter 3, verses 4 through 8. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared. His kindness and love. He's our Savior toward man. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us. You can't lose your salvation if He saves you. See? Salvation is God's thing. Okay? He accepts you. He saves you. And if He purchases you, then uh, you're now His possession. Like we read about it in Ephesians chapter 1. But according to His mercy, He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, not our belief, not our special little prayer that we've prayed or whatever, his grace. How do you get his grace? Ask him for it. Come to him as a sinner. It's really quite simple. The gospel is really not that difficult. Um, People make it difficult because of their self-righteousness that they don't want to give up. They, uh, there's some things in this world that they don't want to quite give up on yet. And they have kind of a little gut feeling that uh, the Lord might be against this stuff, so I'm just going to kind of pretend that I got saved and I'm going to pretend that I uh, work here and I don't want to talk to the boss. You see? That being justified by His grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. Why? Why should you be careful to maintain good works after you get saved? Well, as a Christian, you understand. Because if you don't maintain good works, you'll fall back into the old ways and you'll mess up. 
like you did for years and years and years before you got saved. You'll mess your life up. You go back to the wreck that you were before God saved you. These things are good and profitable unto men. As I've said many, many times, there's not one sin that is, you know, exposed or confronted or whatever in Scripture. There's not one sin that is good for you. God tells you, hey, you, you need to quit doing that. Oh, well, that's going to make my life miserable. You know, <laughs> there ain't anything like that. Unless you're lost and you love your sin. And in your self-righteous pride, you say, hey, I've accepted Jesus. I believe what the Bible says, partly. And uh, I'm going to come to Him and I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to be part of your company now. I want to be a Christian, um, but I'm not going to do what you tell me to do. I'm going to do my own work. Uh, if you tell me that I shouldn't do this or I shouldn't do that, eh, that's up to me to decide. You know, I'm going to show up when I want to. I'm going to complain about the pay that I get or whatever else. And if I don't get pay from you, Lord, I'm just going to kind of, or God, you know, I'll, I'll do your, my own thing and whatever else to, to increase the pay, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so that is going to be it. Um, just uh, had these four studies to do. And um, I'll just be honest with people here, friends of the ministry and things. Uh, I just, I feel um, things are changing. I feel that a lot of people that they're, you know, I mean, there's still, I still witness to the lost world and I still plan on doing that for a long time and, and whatever else. But uh, I just think a lot of these people that have, that have just heard the truth for so many years and they continue to reject, um, I think God's, God's grace is wearing out. And I think, uh, we've been given a very, very unique opportunity as Bible believing Christians to, make truth available all over the world. And uh, it's it's kind of a very small little time period in, in church history. Uh, Christians have always been just pushed down and told to shut up and were called heretics and were burned at the stake and whatever else and, and um, never been allowed to really have a voice. And we've had a, a real good run here for the last number of years. Bible-believing Christians have been able to get out a lot of good truth uh, worldwide, a lot of people have gotten saved. Um, I count myself among that number. I would have never been told the truth in the church buildings that I went to, that I grew up in, and and whatever. Um, a lot of my learning, a lot of my study came from online. I was able to find out about uh, Peter Ruckman and Bible Baptist Bookstore, this banner here, you know, kind of a thing. I uh, was able to hear a lot of other good preaching and teaching and things, and... and uh, but I'll tell you what, the door's closing. I can just, I feel more and more that God's grace is disappearing. And uh, you look back through church history, Christians have been through some really, really rough times. Some very rough times. Uh, persecution and, and just even the thing of famines and war and whatever else. And I think the Lord's left this little door open for a little bit of time. And I feel it's closing. I really do. Um, after 10 years of being on the internet, and uh, actually 11 years, not quite 11 years, it was November 2008, but uh, uh, after after all these years and seeing the spirit change over, over time, um, I think things are wrapping up. And uh, just wanted to say that. And um, so we'll see. We'll see what the Lord's plans are in the future. I'm not going to be getting into a whole lot of things right now talking about this and whatever but I just I know a lot of you are feeling the same thing and I get contacted from a lot of you and you're just saying I'm just frustrated brother I'm just tired I'm worn out um, trying to correct these heresies that come out and stuff that you just think how can these people teach that that's just a lie it's not true you know and and they're attacking me and that's and they're they're twisting my words and they're just um, that time, that little short window of opportunity is, is closing. 
And if you're, you made it the whole way through this as a lost person, you don't know for sure that you're going to go to heaven when you die, you're, you're running out of time. And if you, and you know, you've been watching these videos, uh, you better make a decision um, soon. Uh, just <laughs> Salvation is what God does for us. Salvation is not what we do. Right? It's not based on your beliefs. It's not based on your works. Uh, you got to get in contact with God. And when you do, and you realize just how holy this being is, called the Lord Jesus Christ, and you realize what He did and how He had to suffer to pay for your sins, I'll tell you what, it puts life into a different perspective. All of a sudden, you're not looking at yourself as a good person. You're looking and saying, He's good. He's righteous. I'm a, I'm a worm. I'm a wretch. God, please have grace for me. I believe I believe what your word says, but that isn't going to do it. I can, I need to, I need your grace. I'll put my faith in what your word says here, but if with if without your grace, you see, you're not going to do a bunch of good works to placate him and say to say, hey, look at me, I've done all this good stuff. I bet you're impressed, aren't you? Look at me, I've given up A, B, C, and D, and I'm working on E. Nope, you're not going to impress him. Uh, hey, God, I understand things intellectually, and I'm just going to believe what you said in your word. I don't really need your grace. No. Uh, you need his grace. He needs to save you. And then he can tell you what to do after that. He said, I reject that. Okay, then just reject it, you know. <laughs> it's a tire to people. So... That is going to be it. And um, just be encouraged, brethren, out there that are saved. Not many of you anymore. I realize that. Uh, unfortunately, the wolves are just coming out of the the woodwork right now and the false professing Christians and whatever else. And uh, I know it's frustrating. But um, just stick with it. So that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.